I will be returning to my parents' house for a month. What? What about your household chores? If you're going back, then divorce my son. My mother-in-law threw a divorce document at me. This is convenient. As soon as I left my in-laws, I filed for divorce papers, went back to my parents' house, and informed my father. After one month, I received a relentless phone call from my mother-in-law. Please help me. It's my fault. I apologize. My name is Emily. I'm a 38-year-old office worker. Currently, I live in my in-laws' house with my husband Tucker and my mother-in-law. Although I should love my husband and be happy about our marriage, I deeply regret marrying him now. It's because my mother-in-law constantly bullies me and never changes her attitude. My husband and I met through work. The company I work for and the company he works for were business partners, and we were both assigned to work with each other. As we worked together several times, we naturally became closer. And one day, he invited me to have a meal, which led to us meeting privately. Then we went on a series of dates and started dating. After about a year of dating, he proposed to me, and we decided to get married. It was when I was 35, about three years ago. At the beginning of our marriage, we were very happy. We were living together as just the two of us, and I hadn't realized my husband's true nature yet. Both of us had stable jobs and a good income. On weekends, we enjoyed slightly luxurious trips and delicious meals at nice restaurants. Then I believed that I could make more and more pleasant memories with my husband. But two years into our marriage, our situation changed. This was triggered by the sudden illness and death of his father. My mother-in-law was very saddened by the death of her beloved husband. Seeing this, my husband asked me for advice. Would you like to move in with my mother? Huh? I was a little confused. Indeed, I was concerned about my mother-in-law. However, we had only been married for two years. I wanted to live as a couple for a little longer, at least. But it seemed like my husband didn't want to leave his mother by herself. I'm her only son, so I want to take care of my mother as much as possible, you know. In reality, I haven't been filial enough, and my father passed away. Tucker. Upon seeing my husband looking so sad, I felt the desire to help and support him. But I still regret the decision I made back then. If only I had realized my husband's true nature during that time, I wouldn't have had to go through such hardship. Soon after, my husband and I moved into the in-laws' house. Tucker, it's nice of you to come. Mother, you can feel relieved now that we're here. Thank you. Mother, please take care of us from now on. Sure, I will. Hmm. I wondered if it was just my imagination that my mother-in-law's response to me felt cold. Feeling a bit uneasy, I entered the in-laws' house. My husband and I briefly placed our belongings in the room and then went straight to the living room. I bought some sweets today because you're coming today, Tucker. Wow, these are pastries from my favorite shop. I love the sweet almond paste they use. My husband said with a happy expression, and I couldn't help but smile, finding him childlike. But then my mother-in-law directed a cold gaze at me and said, "Emily, y- yes, what is it? Why are you spacing out? Huh? I bought some pastries, so hurry up and serve the coffee. Uh, sorry. Um." Where are the coffee pots and such? Ha! <sighs> You're utterly useless, aren't you? Huh? Here, it's right here. The wife's shelf is over here. She placed things in a disorderly manner while making that remark. It's because you never helped before that things turned out like this. Although my mother-in-law said that, I couldn't accept it. Even before my husband and I regularly visited her house, but even when I offered to help, my mother-in-law would say, "You don't need to help. Just sit down." 
and wouldn't let me into the kitchen. Perhaps she had strong preferences and didn't want her territory disturbed, I thought. Afterward, I made a point of not offering to help anymore. Yet, suddenly, she would get angry with me like that, which I found unreasonable. In response, my mother in law glared at me. Hey, what's with that expression? Do you have a problem or something? Uh, no. I didn't want to directly argue with my mother in law. Instead, I wanted my husband to intervene and stop her. Thinking that, I looked at my husband sitting at the dining table. But my husband didn't seem concerned and was busy playing with his phone. It made me angry that he didn't care about me, his wife, being unjustly scolded. I never expected to experience such unpleasantness from the very first day. I became anxious about cohabiting with my mother in law. And so the cohabitation with my mother in law began. And immediately, troublesome things started happening. It was early in the morning when it happened. Hey, Emily, why are you still sleeping? Huh? I hurriedly opened my phone and checked the time. Um, well, mother, it's only five in the morning. So what? Time flies when you're making breakfast and Tucker's lunch, you know? Besides, you're supposed to clean the bathroom every day. Huh? I was shocked by my mother in law's words. In the first place, I didn't prepare lunch for my husband, and we didn't eat breakfast because neither of us had a big appetite. Furthermore, I had never cleaned the bathroom before leaving for work because it was exhausting. Certainly, doing all those things required waking up early. But were they really necessary? As I hesitated, my mother in law got angry at, at my lack of action. What are you spacing out for? Get up quickly! I wonder what kind of education you received to become such a useless person. My anger flared up at my mother in law's words. So I decided to do exactly as she said. Every day I woke up at five in the morning and prepared lunch and breakfast for my husband and me. Of course, it wasn't just simple cooking, I made elaborate dishes. And I diligently cleaned the bathroom without fail. As for the bathroom cleaning, the more I did it, the better I felt. It was a satisfying feeling to use a clean bathroom every day. My husband also appreciated my efforts and housework and thanked me for the lunch and bathroom cleaning. However, my mother in law didn't seem pleased. Her demands towards me kept increasing. Today, I feel like having Japanese food. No, wait, Italian. Oh, but it has to be properly made. Make pizza from scratch, prepare pasta, and get the red wine from that shop. She made such demanding requests as if it was a special occasion. And the troublesome thing is that my husband listens to everything my mother in law says. Do it exactly as my mother wants. Saying that, my husband left everything to me. He didn't help at all. And once I took charge, he didn't do anything else. Most of our precious days off were spent preparing the dinners my mother in law desired. Furthermore, my mother in law would complain about various things to me. You're a wife! How long are you going to keep working? Normally, you should be at home supporting your husband. Besides, you're already old, and the deadline for having children is approaching. Do you realize that you're almost worthless? She showered me with terrible words every day, making me question my mother in law's character. What kind of education would raise a person with such a personality as my mother in law? And my husband didn't stand up for me at all. One day, while I was already quite irritated due to work fatigue and the stress from my daily encounters with my mother in law, my husband says something to me. My mom says that you're neglecting the housework. Is that true? Never listen to what I say and always takes a defiant attitude. I used to think it was great that you made lunch for me every day, but now I hear that it's all frozen food. Huh? You actually believe those words from your mother? Of course. Why wouldn't I? Are you saying my mom is lying? You're being terrible. Since you're the wife, can't you fulfill your role a bit more properly? 
I was extremely angered by my husband's words. What are you talking about? Just confirm it with your own eyes. I make homemade lunches, clean, do laundry, and prepare dinner every day. I'm telling you to stop lying. What mom is telling me is true. Tucker, you're crazy, you mama's boy. What are you saying? Because you never believe what I say and never help me. What exactly do you want me to help with? You're such a bother. It's just as mom says. Tucker's face turned red as he angrily responded. Our relationship took a turn for the worse after that big fight, and whenever my mother-in-law would harass me, Tucker would join in and insult me together. Hey, is the food ready? I just got home. Please wait a moment. You're so slow and inefficient. Well, you're a failure, so you can't be helped. <laughs> Never mind. Let's go eat out together. That sounds good. Let's do that. They left me behind and went out to eat together. I was completely excluded from this household. Every day, I was insulted and belittled by the two of them. Do I really need to continue this marriage? That's when an unexpected opportunity came to me, and I thought, with this, I no longer need to be with my husband and mother-in-law. Amidst all this, my husband and mother-in-law continued to harass me as usual. You're truly useless as a daughter-in-law. I can't understand how my son ended up marrying you. She berates me while my husband laughs along. It's about time to make a move. I stood in front of them and said, "I'll be returning to my parents' home for a month." Upon hearing this, both of them widened their eyes, surprised and angry. What? What about the house? What if there's a fire? Yeah, you're being irresponsible beyond belief. If you're leaving, then divorce my son. My mother-in-law shouted and opened a drawer to take something out. It was the divorce papers. She threw the divorce papers at me. Go ahead, sign it. Oh, mom, you're ready for it. That's right. You have no choice but to obey us. If you don't like it, then get a divorce. This is a convenient situation. Fine, let's get divorced. Huh? They both widened their eyes at my response, but I ignore them and pick up the divorce papers, starting to fill them out. Here, I finished my part, so please leave quickly. My husband blinks his eyes at me. Was that hand earlier just a bluff? It was really lame, but. When I say that, my husband probably glared at me. Don't mess around. I'm fine with it. Let's get divorced. Tucker forcefully snatched the divorce papers from me and filled in his own section. Is this good enough? He roughly slammed the divorce papers on the table. Even if you say you want to take it back, it's too late. Oh well, this means it's over for you too. In my heart, as she laughed loudly, I thought it's over for you guys. As soon as I left my in-laws' house, I immediately submitted the divorce papers. I went back to my parents' house and informed my father. He was shocked and immediately said he would take the necessary actions to scold them. Then one month later, I received a barrage of calls from my mother-in-law. Hello, hello, you. What do you want? We're complete strangers now. Please don't say that. Tucker and I are in a difficult situation. Oh, really? That must be tough for you. I haven't said anything yet. I'd prefer to end this call. Can I hang up? Wait, I have a favor to ask. Can you convince your father? Why should I? After everything you and Tucker put me through. I'm sorry about that. I didn't know that your father's company is an important business partner of the company Tucker works for. Actually, my father runs his own company, and it has grown to a considerable size. He used to have business dealings with Tucker's company too. Well, I believe we discussed that matter before getting married. But at that time, my father-in-law was still alive, and perhaps my mother-in-law thought she didn't need to be involved in the conversation. As for my husband, it's odd that he doesn't remember, but I suppose he must have forgotten while joining my mother-in-law and berating me. 
When my father decided to end the business dealings, Tucker's company expressed their desire to continue the contract by letting go of Tucker instead. Consequently, Tucker lost his job. And it turns out that Tucker has suggested remodeling the family home when we were planning to live together, and he had taken out a loan for it. So, considering he's now unemployed, it's nearly impossible to manage loan payments while sustaining a livelihood. Up until now, we've been able to manage because I've been paying my fair share of living expenses as a company employee. But now that I'm divorced, Tucker and my mother in law must be in a desperate situation. Why did you feel the need to show off by remodeling the house? Tucker, you have such pride, don't you? You're just like your mother. Please help me! I apologize for my mistakes! My mother in law, lacking the strength to respond to my provocation, pleaded weakly. I'm sorry, but I will never forgive you for what you've done. If you're expecting me to do something for you, give up and try to find a job, even if it's just for a short period of time. And for me, this conversation is a waste of time, so I'm going to end it now. After saying that, I forcefully hung up the phone and blocked the numbers of my mother in law and ex husband. Afterward, I heard that my ex husband and mother in law couldn't afford to pay the mortgage, so they ended up selling the house. The house wasn't excessively old to begin with. My mother in law could have lived in the house during her retirement years. It's truly foolish that they wasted money. And let go of it. Currently, my ex husband and mother in law are living together in an apartment on an island somewhere. It seems that my ex husband is working part time while they rely on my mother in law's pension to make ends meet. On the other hand, I had actually been preparing for an overseas relocation. It would be a waste to rent a new room. So, I'll be living with my parents until the day I move overseas. I'll be spending time with them until then. I'm sure the life and work in the new country will be enjoyable. With excitement and anticipation, I believe that something great is waiting for me. I have high hopes for the rest of my life. It's truly unfortunate that my mother in law and husband were so difficult to deal with. I wonder why they felt the need to bully me in such a way. Nonetheless, I'm glad that I was able to cut ties with such terrible people. It would be wonderful if she could find a wonderful man overseas and have an international marriage. I sincerely hope. That her future life will be filled with happiness. Thank you for watching until the end. And if you like, please subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.